So you've learned Python, or you're considering learning Python, but you don't know what can you actually do with Python skills. Specifically, what job options do you actually have with Python skills in 2024? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you seven of the most popular and most in-demand job options that you can do as a Python developer, all of which have the potential to earn you more than $100,000 a year. But there is a big caveat to all of these options that I'm gonna get back to later. But first, if you're new here, my name is Thomas. I'm a software engineer for around two and a half years now. From the start, my main programming language has been Python. Learning to code and especially learning Python completely changed my life in more ways than one. And on this channel, I wanna help you learn to code so that you can perhaps change yours too. With that said, let's get started with the first job option. And that is going to be a backend developer. So here we're essentially talking about building websites for the web. So any website you're looking at, like the website of YouTube right now, is a website that has a front end and a back end. So front end is gonna be the visual part of the website that you see on your screen, like the video player, like the suggested videos on the right, the things you can click on, like the like button, for example. By the way, if you wanna test it out, how it works, you can just click on the like button. Anyway, but on top of the front end, every website also has what's called a backend. What the backend will contain is, for example, the YouTube algorithm that, for some reason, recommended this video to you. And the backend can be written in all kinds of different programming languages. And Python is actually a very popular language to be used in the backend of the web. Specifically, the way it works is that you have these web frameworks that essentially contain all the building blocks that you need to build the backend of a website with all kinds of features that you can apply to it, like connecting it to a database, security features, things like this. And for Python, the two most popular frameworks they use for this are something called Flask and Django. So if after learning Python, you wanna become a backend developer, your first step is going to be to learn the basics of the web. What the front end is, what the back end is. Essentially what I just explained, but in more detail. And then after that, to learn one of these frameworks, either Django or Flask. I'm gonna leave a free resources down below to this and to all of these other paths. So if you wanna get started with learning one of these paths right now, you can do that straight away. And there's many other things to learn as well. By the way, if you're looking for one full program that is going to teach you not only Python web development, but also the foundations of Python from first principles. So you can become a Python web developer in as little as six months. Then I have my full program, Python Developer Bootcamp. Down below is my flagship program, more than 500 students. The ones of you that have purchased it have absolutely loved it. If you are interested, you can use the code Python down below to get a discount on it as a thank you for watching this particular video. But with that, let's move on to the next path, which is going to be a data analyst. So what a data Data analyst is, is a programmer or a professional who will work for some company and collect a bunch of data about the service. Let's say you work for Amazon. You're going to be collecting data about the purchasing patterns of your customers, about the watch history of your customers if you work for something like Netflix or YouTube. You're going to essentially look at a bunch of data and use specific Python tools to extract and like learn stuff from that data. That is essentially what data analysis is going to be. And to do that, you're going to have to learn certain things. You're going to learn about web scraping. You're going to learn about different ways of gathering this data from all kinds of sources. And then you're going to learn about different tools or different Python libraries to actually create visualizations and other kinds of insights from this data. They can then use and present to your superiors to essentially say like, okay, based on the watch history of our users or whatever, we learned that these things are popular and these kinds of users like these kinds of movies and things like this. And from that, you can improve your service. This is an extremely extremely important task in any business, which is why data analysts are paid extremely, extremely well. From that, we also get into data science and machine learning. So the difference between data analysis and data science can be a bit murky because some companies might call a role a data scientist where that exact same role at a different company might be called a data analyst. But broadly, data science is like data analysis, except more scientific, more like rigorous in a way. So rather than just like making reports and visualizations and drawing insights from a data, you're essentially using data to make predictions about the future. You're using all kinds of statistical methods to essentially look at past data and make predictions about the future. A data analyst will look at current data and using that explain what happened in the past. 
For example, based on this data, these kinds of users usually watch these kinds of movies. Whereas the data scientists will look at current data to make predictions about the future. For example, a data scientist at YouTube might look at your watch history and based on that, make predictions about what kinds of videos you wanna watch in the future so that they can then recommend those videos to you on your YouTube homepage. And the next level beyond that is gonna be machine learning. We're actually creating machine learning algorithms that take a bunch of data and then based on that data, they automatically learn things about you or what you like, what you're interested in, and then automatically recommend that to you on YouTube. The pro of this is that for these kinds of roles where you're going data science, machine learning, the pay is gonna be extremely, extremely high, but the barrier to entry to these kinds of roles is also going to be much higher. In fact, it can be quite difficult to get into one of these roles if you don't have relevant technical experience or a degree in either mathematics, statistics, or computer science. It's not that it cannot be done, but usually what will happen is that you will start off as something like a data analyst, and then you will essentially graduate to be a data scientist or things like this. The next option is gonna be a quality assurance engineer. To understand what these guys do, let's just look at a real job posting of a quality assurance engineer to understand this. Here we have a job posting on LinkedIn, quality assurance engineer, quality assurance engineers, design, develop, and maintain automated testing for Neon One, which is the company in this case, products. They oversee the software quality control processes for web applications, blah, 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 using both automated testing and manual testing to identify possible technical problems in a staging environment, creating reports regarding software bugs, recommending changes to the development process prior to release. So essentially what this means to oversimplify this, in general, we have bad software and we have good software. And the difference between bad software and good software is that good software doesn't have bugs. It's been properly tested. So it's actually going to work in all kinds of edge cases when a bunch of real users use it and things like this. And usually if you're just a software engineer whose purpose is to develop these applications from scratch, you don't have the time to test every possible case. Like if you use your software yourself, it might work perfectly, but when some other user gets your application and uses it in a completely different way, it might completely break because you haven't considered all of these cases. It's the job of quality assurance engineers to make sure that you have quality software that works, that doesn't break, that's been properly tested to account for all these possible use cases and things like this. So what you're gonna be learning is things like automated testing libraries, like Selenium. What you're also gonna be doing is what's called performance testing. So you might have some software that works well when it's being used by a small number of users, but it might break when it's being used by 5,000 or 5 million users. So there are all kinds of libraries in Python that allow you to test these kinds of scenarios automatically without actually having to give your software to millions of users. Next, we have AI engineering. So obviously, unless you've been living under a complete rock, you will know that AI is a really big thing nowadays in the tech industry. And why being an AI engineer is particularly interesting to you is that obviously a lot of people are afraid that AI is gonna take our jobs and things like this. But if you're an AI engineer, you can actually be one of the people taking the jobs rather than one of the people whose job is being taken if that makes sense. Now this is gonna overlap quite a lot with data science and machine learning, one of the categories that we talked about before. You could even say that this is part of the same category because a lot of the time an AI job will involve a lot of data science and vice versa, but I decided to include it as a separate job here anyway. Now, if you have the skills of building AI, then you're gonna have probably the most in-demand and like most future-proof skill set that you can possibly have in this day and age. If you wanna get started with the AI, there's a great course, there's a completely free course by Harvard University that you can do online. It's called like Introduction to AI or something like that. Absolutely fascinating and interesting course. I haven't done much AI in my life, but I recommend everyone does this. You'll sort of get an idea of how AI, like different types of AI actually work behind the scenes. So I highly recommend you do that. With that, let's move on to the next one. And that is gonna be an automation engineer. So on this channel, we talk a lot about automation projects. I have a ton of videos about Python automation projects that you can do, obviously, to automate real things like boring things in your own workflow and in your own life. If you were to work as an automation engineer, it's essentially the same idea, except you're creating automations for companies to improve company workflows, to automate things that people would have to do manual work for otherwise. For example, I remember at my software engineer job that I was working at, even though I was not an automation engineer or anything like that, I was able to create a Python script that actually automated some tasks that we were having to do like hundreds of times manually 
in the team. And when I did that, then obviously the team was extremely, extremely appreciative of that. So I think automation is the kind of skill that even if you're not particularly working as an automation engineer, it's going to be an extremely, extremely useful, just a skill to have as a developer because it can help you in your own life and in your company. I can really buy a lot of goodwill from your team if you're able to use automation to help your team. Last but not least, we have a network security engineer. This is another thing that these days is becoming more and more and more relevant. And it's a really great option specifically because I don't think there's as many people who are doing this as, for example, web development or data analysis or some of the other things we talk about because it's not as like sexy. It's not as cool to be taking care of the security of your computer's network or something like that. But again, it's something that almost every company is going to need because every company is going to have some sort of classified data in their private networks or things like this. And there's a lot of cyber attacks and things like this that can happen in this day and age. So protecting the data of your company is extremely, extremely crucial. For example, right now I'm staying at a hotel and I'm sure that they have a lot of data in their internal servers and things like this that they don't want to leak, like sensitive data about their guests, like their systems, their revenue, things like this. Now here again, you're going to be learning a lot of specific skills around network security, around the security architecture of all kinds of computer networks, about firewalls, about virtual private networks. You might learn about cryptography. Now, this brings us to the one big caveat about all of these seven jobs that we've gone through here. And you might have noticed here is that a common thing here is, is that to get into any of these jobs is not enough to just have Python skills. For all of these, you're going to need some skills on top of learning Python. For web development, you're going to need to learn web frameworks. For data analysis, you're going to need to learn data analysis tools. For network security engineers, you're going to need to learn a bunch of things about network concepts, about cryptography, all these kinds of things. And this is a really great lesson for anyone wanting to become a developer. It's never enough just to learn a programming language and think like, oh, now I'm going to become a developer. It's good to just learn Python first and then explore all these different options. So I'm going to leave a bunch of resources down below for all of these different jobs. And what I want you to do is to go and research all of them, to think about what actually interests you, and then deep dive into that one area. It's not useful to be a jack of all trades where you know a bit about everything. It's much better to be a specialist in one Thing. Because in this economy, the most money is made by those people who are really, really good at one very, very specific thing. So keep that in mind. With that said, if you're looking to learn Python and you haven't even started yet and you're wondering what is the actual step-by-step -step process to go from beginner to intermediate to advanced, then I recommend you watch this video right here because that video is going to help you to become an advanced Python developer so that then after that, you can go and learn the specific skills for any of these specific parts and become a real Python developer and get a 100k job. So go watch that video next, and I'll see you in the next one.